she doesn't go back to school in fourth grade, and she has a tutor. Um, what's what's the daily routine like the rest of that school year? Well, we get her up. We try to keep it scheduled. Get her up. Um, her brother's up and gone to school, and I get her up and get her dressed, get her something for breakfast, and every day I put out a different activity out on the kitchen table because at this point in time she's pacing. This is where the pacing starts. Um, I don't know why in my feeble little mind I thought that once we got home everything would go back to normal or things will click into place. That's not the case. So uh, she starts pacing and I think in a day she probably put on 10 miles of pacing in the house. I'd have to actually physically ask her and ask her to sit down. And it was very difficult for her to do that. Did she do that in the hospital as well? No. In the hospital she did a lot of tapping, um, just always with her hand, something with her hand. Has the doctor given you any, doctor given you any explanation for the pacing or this need to move? I hate to say it. I know that they did, but I think in my, because I never left the hospital when I was down there, so I think I was on overload myself, or maybe just a little bit of mental fatigue, and even though I understood it because of what he was saying, that things are reconnecting and she's not going to do it, but I guess I didn't realize it until I got home, and I didn't have that support system that was there to help me make sure that I was doing things right. That was she ever, there's a term they call elopement, meaning that she basically wants to escape or wanders off. Did she ever do that when she got home? She, no, she paced and everything like that, but the first time she ever walked away from us, we were camping, went to a campsite to see all of our old friends at the campsite and everything, and she um, said she was gonna go for a walk, and she went for a walk, and like a, like a dummy, I thought, well, she'll know her way back, but she didn't. We had to go find her. How long ago? When was that? How old was she? Oh, she was, she was, had just turned 10, so it was probably in May. Open fishing, fishing season is when we usually start our camping season. Is she wearing a helmet when she comes home? No. So they did, did they give her any protective headgear and, until they fixed her, I'm assuming they haven't fixed her skull yet? No. Then they said that she wouldn't need it. The injuries were the uh, size of her holes in her forehead. They didn't remove the whole f um, forehead uh, per se at that time. They just had the open holes, you know, with the skin covering it. And uh, they said that she wouldn't need it, but she couldn't be a, on a surface higher than four feet. They wanted her lower than that. They didn't want her going faster than her feet could carry her. So no bikes, no scooters, rollerblades, you know, of course, all that was all there. Did her skull grow back together? No. Did they she, ever? She had to put prosthesis. So pieces. they did ultimately go back in and put in some? Yeah, yep, six months later. So they, so tell me about the second surgery. Oh my gosh, I think it was worse than the first. Saw her come out with that bandaged head and she was a little swollen, her eyes were a little puffy, but they were open. And this time, she knew what was happening, and she was like, why did we do this again, Mom? Why did you let them do this to me? And no, I, she's more concerned about how she looks. Yeah, she was thinking about that. I just think it's the pain level, too. She was aware of it before. Um, this nice lady, the beautician, when she first got out of surgery was, and put on the pediatric rehab unit, was pulling and tugging on her scalp so hard with her hair that had been matted with blood and whatever else, that um, the beautician, she goes, oh, I feel terrible pulling it like this, and she never yelped or spoke about anything, and she didn't was, feel it. This was a week or two after her yeah, injury. about a, a good week after. And how is weeks. her, in contrast, after the second surgery? Um, her scalp about. sensation, her scalp sensation obviously recovered you know, it took a couple of weeks for the forehead, you know, but she can't raise her eyebrow, one of her eyebrows, her left one, I don't think she can raise. What did they, what were they able to do in terms of repairing the orbit bone around the left eye? They left it. We weren't going to touch it. We, they took care of the front, 
but they didn't want to invade the space, uh, the orbital roof of her eye socket, because it, they said that the millimeters that she's off between the horizontal vision, they didn't want to mess with for fear that if it built scar tissue up, it might really mess with things. But they were hoping that scar tissue would fill that area. And it seems like it's been fine. Where is she at in terms of her cognitive function at what would be the end of you know May or June of, of what would have been fourth grade? Is she seeming to get back to normal? No. Okay, what's, what's abnormal? Getting a little bit more, uh, could never finish a project. Um, couldn't, would never, even though I have activities out on the table, she'd start coloring. First, she just held the crayon and looked at the page, and then it got better where she started coloring, but then it stopped. It would only be one object or a half of an object or so, not even a half of an object. And then she got to the point where she was destructive, where she would draw, because she was really good at coloring and drawing, and she's pretty fussy about it, that if she went outside the line or because she knew, I think it was how it wasn't looking like before, she'd rip it all up.